is up folks, Jorge Nito here, thanks for stopping over, welcome back. Guys, today we are checking out the Blue Remedies, the most recent offering from Daniel Madison and Daniel Snyder. And yes, I'm going into this with the full knowledge, there are already reviews out there on these cards. Dave over at Magic Orthodoxy, Kier Gomes, some others, you may ask yourself, what more can be said about these cards? And I am under the persuasion that the discussion on these cards can and will continue long after I speak my piece about them. But I want to ultimately answer the question at the end of this review. Have Daniel Madison and Daniel Snyder really hit a home run with these? I think there's some things to talk about and some things to address. So guys, without further ado, the Blue Remedies. First and foremost, we have to talk about the tuck box. You'll see some ad copy on the bottom. It says Remedies, Madison, and Snyder, similar to the Scarlet Remedies. Minimal design. The design of the card on the back, you'll notice on this one, though, um, they, they have no seal on them, which is a plus uh, for me. I do like a cool-looking seal, but ultimately, I would rather it not be there. So I'm glad they went with this. Um, you know, with no sill. You have Madison and Snyder on the top with the Remedies logo there in the center. But right here on this tongue flap, um, they've added Madison and Snyder, their initials right there. And I think that is so cool um, that Snyder's decided to do that. It just makes for, it just, you know, it, it says something. When you can look down there at that little thumb placement and, and see that. Um, almost like insignia it, it's just um, it does something for the deck itself I think you'll also see we cannot recover from who we are um, the theme behind the deck and so if you was to just look at these cards from afar you would think they're just you know both kind of the same different color but upon closer inspection you will see that this card has an air cushion embossed embossing sorry I couldn't speak um, yeah, so you'll just see that little like waffle pattern just there and this kind of harkens back to the original rounders With the majority of the rounders, I think uh, except for the white rounders and the gold um, All of the other ones are printed on The cardstock the, the actual tuck box itself is made from actual cardstock with the air cushion finish on it just there. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but there's just the same, you know, little dots you'd see on the back of the card. That's what you're going to see on this box. And it's just, to me, it lends itself to the functionality of the deck in general. And it, there's just something to be said and there's something to be appreciated when that much attention to detail is went into the deck, even the box, just all of it. Um, it, it's a beautiful tuck box. So I've decided to sit these beside the original blue rounders just so you can see for yourself. Because if you look on uh, blackroses.com, the original uh, Scarlet Remedies, you'll see Daniel Snyder talking about the Remedies, really paying homage to those early days of custom playing cards. And we all know that the rounders were a part of that. Um, the rounders really are a staple deck, a staple item. Um, in the hands of any slider of hand, cardist, card enthusiast, card collector. They're just that uh, good of card. But you can see how the color is similar. Um, I think it's just a shade different in my opinion. And so on the deck, the design, very minimalistic. You have a bordering on thin border. So actually, if I get a close look at that, it's definitely not a thick border, and I wouldn't call it medium, so it's definitely on the thinner side as far as borders go, in, you know, in, in my thinking. We have the, the quill, or the feather of Charlie, which is representative. Representative. I'm going to have to get a hold of Charlie and see if that's a word. Uh, that is representative of Daniel Madison, obviously Charlie Madison, and... We have the rose there opposite the quill, which is um, Daniel Snyder's for Black Rose's playing cards. With this deck, you will get what appears to be identical jokers. However, in one of 
the Jokers in Charlie's Beak, you will see a Nine of Diamond reveal right there in the center of the rose. You'll also receive, everything is completely custom, uh, from the court cards, you know, all the way to the spot cards, the, the number cards. Daniel Snyder has tirelessly redesigned all the lines, uh, removed any blotches. It just redesigned every single thing, hand-drawn, uh, meticulously taken the time to make just some pristine design on all of these cards and there's just a lot to be appreciated um, you can see the custom remedies ace of spade just there we cannot recover from who we are and below that the original madison rounders uh, that's from the blue deck there i just put it there just so you could kind of see the similarities and you may ask is illusionist getting dunked on uh by these or is it you know it, like like what i said earlier paying homage to the deck, and I and I really think it is, you know, um, paying homage to those early cards. Uh, but I'll just show you close up uh, some of the artwork on these cards. Daniel Snyder is the King of Diamonds, as well as Daniel Madison, also the King of Diamonds. You'll see some reveals in their hands: the Nine of Clubs for Madison, the Two of Diamonds for Snyder. We have Blaine. We have the Queen of Spades with the Four of Diamond Reveal in her hand. We have these, the beautiful um, court hearts, or heart courts, I should say. Uh, Bill Davis right there. You can see a tattoo on his neck, the Queen of Clubs. David from Magic Orthodoxy. And some others, uh, friends of Snyder's and Madison, no doubt. And it's just cool, just the things that you could do with all of these little things included in the court card as far as like a can effects um, and what have you. There's just a lot that you could do. You'll also receive an angle zero gaff card, two of diamonds. We also have an Eight of Spades reveal right up here in the um, on the inner flap of the bottom. I don't know if it's picking it up with all this lighting I have going on right now, but there is an Ace of Spades reveal, and you can either choose to you know tear the box apart to do that. Um, and actually, you wouldn't have to really tear the box up. You could just kind of um, pull it down and and reveal it that way, or you could use a lighter, which was the idea of Johnny Vox. I like to use the flashlight keychain for the reveal. These cards are traditionally cut. They are printed on premium B stock, thin crushed. These cards handle like an absolute dream. Now there, there was some discussion on Instagram about um, just how thin and flexible they are. And some people are turned off by that. In fact, somebody was saying that the original Scarlet Remedies are uh, quite a bit stiffer and that they really just wish that the blue ones felt like the red ones. And I just have to disagree. Um, thankfully, Daniel Snyder came in and cleared things up. Um, There's actually the same stock and finish on both cards. The reason that um, some feel stiffer um, some feel softer. It's because it really, it's something that's out of, you know, their control. It has to do with, you know, basically who's on the job at USPCC that day. And so I am just a fan of these thin cards. Here's the thing. I like stiff cards for certain things, but when it comes to magic and sleight of hand, nothing beats thin cards. That's why I love black roses so much. The red roses, the black roses, all of them is because they're so thin and they lend themselves to everything that I do concerning sleight of hand. I like stiff cards. I mean, if I want to sit down and play a game of cards with my buddies, now, I'm not saying this in a condescending way, but, you know, stiffer cards are desirable for, like, card games and, you know, things like that. But, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, the original remedies handle like a dream, but these right here where they're so flexible... They're so soft. It's just insane. You know, and these feel almost identical 
to the original rounders because the rounders were thin, soft, and flexible as well. They, they feel identical in my opinion, and I'm just so thankful. Whoever was working at USPCC those days when they you guys were printing these, you need a trophy because this is what we need in the sleight of hand world, and I'm so thankful for these cards. Uh, I'm just so you know enthusiastic about them just in general. I originally posed the question at the beginning, have Daniel Madison and Daniel Snyder um, hit a home run with these cards, and it's a resounding yes from me. Uh, I, I just think that, you know, these cards are so exceptional. It's not just, you know, you, some people may be uh, mistaken to think that they are just, you know, a recolor, uh, but the whole deck is completely redesigned from the ground up. All of the court cards, um, all of the customization, uh, it, it is all fresh and new and it's completely different. If you compare them side by side to the original Scarlet's, you will notice the differences for yourself. Guys, that's what I have to say about the Blue Remedies. I will leave links in the description where you can pick up these cards. Jorge Anito here, signing off. Be blessed.